This is going to be a six by six, and the first thing we're gonna do is paint our background. So I'm gonna get one of my trays. I like to use these until they're so crusty, you can't use them anymore. So we're just gonna use an old tray. Y'all, my new little area is so tidy, I don't even know what to do. And I'm getting a new painting table that is gonna have a glass top, so it'll be clean and fresh instead of seeing all this paint because I'll be able to take a knife and scrape, 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 scrape off any paint or resin that gets on my glass top and it'll be so much nicer to look at. Yeah, six by six, Becky. Okay, so we are gonna first put some white. We're gonna do our background real quick. The tree challenge is not ready yet. It'll be about 10 days before it's ready. So give me 10 days, I think maybe nine, and we will be posting that. Make sure you get on the wait list. We will be posting and letting everybody know when that is ready and available. I know, Sandra, I'm so excited for mine. I can't even stand it. So that's Anita's white. Now I'm gonna add some mermaid blue. Is it, Sandra, is it just super easy to clean and scrape all the ickies off? That's what I'm looking forward to because I know it bugs me that y'all can see how messy I am. Oh, no need to be sorry, love. We're just not ready yet. We're still waiting on um, one thing. It was supposed to come today and it actually was um, about to get dropped off at my old address and FedEx called to confirm delivery to my old address and I was like, whoa, Nelly. So yeah, it was kind of scary. I thought, please don't send that there. So go to, um, let me look and make sure I'm telling you right. Give me one second. I want to make sure I'm telling you the right place to go to get on the wait list. So let me check real quick. Uh, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing and you miss, so let me, Mike Showa, slash, okay, I am going to post it in, I'm going to post the link for the wait list in just a second down at the bottom. Let's get to painting first and while this is drying, yay Deb! Um, while this is starting to dry, I will post the link into this, um, into the comment thread, but I'll also post it at the very top so you don't have to go looking through the comments to find it, okay? But let me, let me try something real quick. Copy. Let me see. Give me two seconds. I'm going to try to make sure you guys have access to that. I don't want anybody to miss out because last year, uh, woo, law. I had some people who wanted one after they were already sold out and they tore me up. They tore me up, ladies and gents. Tore me up. Okay, let me find my live and I'm going to post this link. This is. There it is. Let me see if I could pin it to the top. I cannot. But I did post the link to the wait list, okay? Let's say thank you, Janie. So we have three colors and we're gonna start with just some white and I'm just gonna put a little bit of white. I'm not gonna oversaturate because I don't want my colors to be really, really bland. Yeah, my, my table was so bad today. I came in to my shop and I was so grumpy because, hang on guys, hold on a second. Let me show you what I'm doing. There's a big bump. I don't know if you can see it. There's a bump right there on my canvas and I can feel that underneath there is like glue that is on the other side. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use my little box knife and I'm gonna see if I can get that off because I don't want that bump in my canvas. Let me find it again. It's right here and it's making my canvas bow up a little. So let me see if I can get that off without cutting my canvas up. 
So it's like a little bump of glue or something. Ugh. I think I got it. I oh, got it. Awesome. Thank you for the stars. I don't know how to close this. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Thank you for the stars. <sighs> Let me join you with you Facebook like news feed. I watch you all the time. Not accept mine from you. Uh, I don't know what you're saying, Rose. I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. Okay, so this is all covered with white. It's still a little damp, which is good. So now what I'm gonna do, I don't know what you're saying to me, is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna start with this green, which is like a teal mint. And I am going to add it over the top of my white. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that blue. We're probably gonna have to do the sides too, but we'll do those in a minute. Green. A little bit of the blue. And I'm just kind of being messy and abstract. I'm not trying to do anything too terribly fancy. Yay, Christy, where'd you go? Oops, I did the wrong thing. Green. And we'll add a little blue. Whoa, Nelly, that was a lot of blue. A little bit of green. And then we're gonna do our edges real quick. We won't spend too much time. Hey, Maureen. Yay, Carol. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our edges. I'm just, because this is a dark color and I don't want my edges to be completely white. We're not gonna worry too much about them being perfect but I do want to get a little bit of color on those sides so that they, so it's not so stark white on the edge. So let me get, I'm gonna go into my green, go into my white, and we will tidy that up just a wee bit. A wee bit. Panama City, you go girl. I was in Destin last week and we did a course at Justin Gaffrey's studio. We did, me and my girls went to Gaffrey's studio and did that thick texture art. Y'all, let me tell you, it was so much fun. I can't even tell you. I don't even know how to tell you how much fun that was. It was so super fun. All right, a little bit of white, almost done. Then we will clean up or we will dry our sides a little bit of blue. Now, now it won't look so weird to have. Ugh. Now it won't, won't look so strange. So let's dry this with our heat gun. So we'll throw that in there. So I'm using a heat gun from Amazon. And I'm just going to drive this. Drive it. <laughs> I was reading Karen's comment that she was leaving for Pensacola Friday. And all I could think was drive. So that's where that went. So I'm gonna dry this with my heat gun. Weren't they awesome, Laura? It was so much fun, oh my goodness. I actually bought one of Justin's kits. Um, I can't show you, Sandra, because we had to leave them there. I was flying and it, I, we had to leave them there because they have to dry for a, for a week. So they're shipping them to us. There is a coat of white. It was so much fun. I did buy a kid probably a year and a half ago, but I was too in intimidated to try it. And now I'm totally gonna do my kits. It's like a beachy scene. I remember that, Christy. Well, Rhea, I was in Destin on business with some business people, so I wasn't gonna really have any time to meet up with anybody, but the next time I go on a personal trip, we are definitely gonna set something up so that I can meet all you guys who live in the general area. I love doing that. Uh, last time I went for fun, I did do that. I know, Bonnie. 
I don't do it very often, so don't hold me accountable. <laughs> but yes, I did do the sides. He does sell kits, um, Laura. Just go to his website, justingaffrey.com, and you'll be able to find those. Yeah, it's still sitting, yeah. Your heat gun blew up, oh my goodness. Oh, I will show you when I do my kit. That would be super fun. Okay, so I have a little tracer and my graphite paper and a stylus. So I'm gonna transfer the image. I'll, talk, I'll tell you all about the uh, Christmas tree challenge again when we're done, because I can't focus on more than one thing at a time or I will mess something up. So I need to do this and then we'll talk about the challenge again in a minute. So I'm gonna tape down my little tracer and then I'm gonna slip this under. And we are going to uh, put our pattern, and find the right way to go. We're gonna put our pattern onto our canvas. Now, if you were asking about doing the words on the Amazing Grace Cross, this is exactly how we do it. You get a tracer that has all the words already printed on it. So you'll take the graphite paper that's included in the kit. Yeah, I'm definitely a squirrel. That is included in the kit and you'll take an ink pen and you will literally trace over the words just like I'm tracing over the pumpkin. And then all you have to do is color it in. So I am tracing my little pumpkin. And that's the stem. So I'm gonna do that center all the way to the edge. That was a little janky. And all the way to the edge. Now we have another pumpkin section and another pumpkin section and one more. And I'm not gonna fill in where I have my little curly cues. Uh, I'm just gonna do those with my pen at the end, and uh, that way we don't have to match it and make it perfect, but uh, there are little curly cues. So here is what we end up with is our pattern traced onto our background of our canvas. Let me put this away because we spent all day today cleaning my studio, so I'm gonna try to keep it clean more than 48 hours. Okay. So now we're gonna do kind of a traditional pumpkin. I am going to add a few fun colors to it. Not too much, but mm, I kind of wanted to start with traditional orange. So we'll just see how it goes. We are going to add a uh, spiced pumpkin. I don't blame you, Barbara. When I watch people do lives, I like to watch on my television. You do a little more of that orange. Now we're gonna do a little bit of terracotta. That feels like it's thick. A little terracotta. And I'm gonna put a little bit of heritage brick. I don't even know if I'll use all these, so pay attention. I'm not sure what I'm 100% gonna do yet. I'm gonna add, add a little bit of green still. I need brown for my stem. This is burnt umber. And I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of yellow ochre because I might use that too. I know, Sandra, me too. Me too. And today I was looking for something and I got so frustrated because I could not find what I was looking for. And I just got so mad at myself. So I was like, that is it. I'm stopping right now. And we are cleaning up this area. And then we just went crazy. So I'm gonna start with, actually, I think that's a little big. We're gonna start with this one. I think most of my brushes are in the sink. Oh, this one's good. I'm gonna start with this one. I don't know what the number is. These paint brushes don't have numbers, but it's probably about a half inch flat, okay? So I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna wet that sucker. And we are gonna start with our traditional pumpkin color, which is this bright orange. I'm gonna move this where you can kind of see what we're doing. Let me make sure 
my, I'm gonna take a sip while I make sure you can see my pumpkin and my paint. So, here we go, paint, pumpkin, art shattered, we're good to go. I know, Sandra, but let me tell you how good it felt for me. It felt so good, I could not even deal. I was just like so happy that all my stuff, stuff was uh, where I could find it. And I actually found the one thing I was looking for. So it felt really good. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do one pumpkin section at a time because I'm feeling a little spicy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling like I might wanna do something with lots of colors, which is why I have all these colors on my palette, especially on this blue background. So bear with me. I'm gonna add a little bit of this green. And this is crocodile. Maybe I'm not. Whew. I'm having a hot flash, y'all. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where I put things. And I have Carla too, so she tries to help me stay focused and remember where I put things. <laughs> so let's get that covered with the bright orange. And then I think I'm gonna go in, my brush is still dirty. I think I'm gonna go in to this Spice Pumpkin, this other orange. Let me look and see what it is. Terracotta. Terracotta. I'm gonna just get some of that on the side of my brush. And I'm gonna go, look, I already got green on my canvas where it shouldn't be, because I'm a hot mess. I'm just gonna come around I need to offload some of that orange. Let's try that again. Green, I mean, terracotta. I'm gonna go into the heritage brick. There we go. And I'm just gonna start adding some of those colors. I'm actually gonna get some white on the opposite corner. And I'm just doing crazy stuff, y'all. I'm just gonna be making crazy moves and suggestions because I just feel my studio's all clean and I just feel a little bit cuckoo. So I might do some cuckoo things. So let's, let's add in a little more of that terracotta and I'm gonna go in the middle with a little bit of that brick red, heritage brick, whatever it was. Now, Y'all don't go crazy. I'm gonna get a little, I wiped off my brush a little, and I'm gonna get a little bit of that blue on the tips of my brush, and I'm literally gonna go, whoop, get a little bit on the tips. I'm gonna come down this way. I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm gonna go into my green, and I'm gonna come around here, maybe here and here. I'm just adding colors that make me happy. I know, I know, Damon, a clean studio. It's crazy, isn't it? Who would have figured? Mine is only clean maybe once a year. <laughs> maybe once a year. Okay, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with that. Look how cute that is. That is just one little section. So we're just gonna continue on and do the next section in somewhat of the same manner. We'll just play and we'll, after we're done, we'll brush on a little bit of white to highlight and we're just gonna do all our sections like this. So we'll start with our orange again and just base that in. Now I'm going around my little brown where the stem comes around and through those pumpkin sections. So, I kind of go, I'm leaving that for to paint brown. So let's get the orange on and then we're gonna make a crazy section again. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna start with this brick, the heritage, and we'll just go kind of around the outside with that. 
So it's darkest on the left side. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of that terracotta. We'll add a little bit of that to the middle. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. I'm gonna come right along this edge with my white right up next to that little stem. Now we're gonna do the crazy colors again. Let's get a little bit of this blue just, oh, you can't even see the blue. Barely on the tips of your bristle. And we'll just add a little bit wherever we decide we want it. And a little bit of the green as well. Same thing. Just kind of throw it in wherever makes you happy. All right, next section. I think I'm gonna put this over here so you can actually see. Section is the orange, and we're getting a little bit smaller. I have to hold, I have to be quiet and hold my mouth right when I'm doing this, so I don't mess it up. wipe that off. Are y'all digging this so far? Let's go with the dark brick. We'll hit that outside edge again. I'm going to leave a little space at the very tip top edge for some whites. So I'm going to kind of go almost in the middle. Offload, get a little bit of that terracotta. We'll add a little bit there. I'm gonna get, I need some more white. Let me grab white. This is kind of fun. I, at my intent, honestly, <laughs> my intent was for us to do like a very basic pumpkin to start with and then just get wild as the days go on. Well, obviously that did not work out well because I just like went off the deep end and got wild right here in the start. So let's get a little bit of white, just a tiny, tiny bit, and I'm gonna come right along that top edge. I overdid a little, so we'll come back with that heritage. Right in there. And I think we can fix that sucker up with a little bit of blue. So let's get that blue in and just boom. Oh my goodness, y'all, that is so cute. Now I need to do that teeny section there, so I need a little bit of a smaller brush. So let me grab something that's gonna be better for that tiny piece. Oops, look at there, did it again. Oops, I did it again. That's because I'm a bad paintbrush mother. Let's do a little orange. Ooh. Offload, we'll add a little bit of this red. A little bit of terracotta. And you guys totally don't have to add all these colors. I've never even used any of this ochre, but I think we're going to add some in the end just for highlights. I'm gonna get a little bit of that red again. Now some white. I'm gonna offload a little bit because I was excessive last time. A little bit of white. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of this, this green which is the crocodile, just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna throw that in right there. We're gonna do another layer. Okay, so we got two sections over here to do as well. So I'm gonna use my bigger brush for the first one. Is this fun or what? <laughs> Happy little pumpkins, I love that. Okay, so let's start with our orange again. We're gonna do this section here. There are two sections. So 
this one there's a little bit of that stem again right there so we'll avoid that all the way to the edge this is making me so happy okay so I think we'll do I'm going to start with my heritage brick and I'm going to do it right along that edge I didn't do a very good job of that so let's try again thank you for the sprinkles and then some of the spice pumpkin we're going to grab a little bit of this I think this was ochre yellow ochre put it there a little bit of white so the moral of this guys is don't be afraid to use crazy colors in your pumpkins it just makes it more fun seriously this is so cute let's start let me go with my little bitty brush again hey Amy Ain't no telling what this is gonna look like in the end. So y'all stick with it. Stick with me. I promise not to keep you forever. All right. Let's do a little bit of the brick. Uh, I'm gonna do that on the top here. A little bit of the terracotta. I'm gonna go into that ochre again. Now I'm gonna grab up a little bit of this blue on my little baby brush, blend it in, and let's do, boom. A little bit of boom, a little bit of boom. Oh my goodness, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to the top edge of this one. Just right along the top. And then we're gonna stop and I'm gonna do the stem while this dries and then we may and we may not add more delicious goodness. But let's go ahead and I'm just gonna use a round brush. This is a number four round doesn't really matter what size and I'm going to go into my brown and I'm going to paint into my stem the brown so it starts kind of right there this is those little fingers that sometimes go in to your pumpkin sections So let's get those done right there. You want them to be kind of crazy and bumpy and not perfect. All right, so let's come. I need something to put my hand on so I don't get my paint everywhere. So I'm gonna start here and just bring the brown down and just don't be afraid to make it look a little bumpy and crazy and I think I had where's my tracer where's my tracer oh I'm gonna bring a little just a tiny bit right there as well all right now I'm gonna rinse that off just a little I'm gonna grab a little bit of white on my same liner brush you're gonna blend that in a little because you don't want it to be stark white. And on the left side, hey Christy, is that true? <laughs> on the left side, I'm just gonna run that white right along the left edge of that stem. So it kind of helps it with dimension. Hey Florida. All right, so now I'm gonna rinse my brush a little. I'm gonna grab up some of this green. 
And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Just a little bit to give it a little color there as well. Now, I need to add a little bit more brown in the middle because I made like a crazy line. But you should end up with a kind of a three-dimensional stem. And it always looks more dimensional if you have more than one color blending into it, each other. Does that make sense? So we have the brown. I'm going to put a little bit of white in the brown, a little bit of green in the brown, so it makes it kind of pop. All right, now we're going to do something super fun. I'm going to dry this real quick because I don't want my colors to blend into each other. So let's get this dry. Oh man, we, are, we have 297 viewers. Thank you guys, you are so awesome. Thank you for taking some time out of your day. I don't think I've ever been over 300. So if you think your friends would like to see this, I'd love it if you sprinkled and asked them to come join us so I can see that 300 number. Never had 300. Hey, Shannon. Hey, boo. I think we have one little wet spot, so. Thank you, Christy. It's mostly just having fun. Honestly, it is literally just about not being afraid to make crazy colors together and just having some fun. So I'm gonna see if I can grab another brush, about a quarter inch flat. My brushes are all mixed up and I'm not gonna wet this one, okay? I'm gonna use this one dry. Was I at 310 and I missed it, Cindy? Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, so while we're, this is dry now, I'm actually gonna take, I'm trying to decide, I'm gonna take a little bit of the ochre, which is the yellowy mustardy color on my brush. I'm just gonna brush it through, okay? So I, I end up with very little brush or very little paint on my brush. So you're gonna dip it in the paint and then just brush it across your palette or whatever you're using till it looks like you brushed all the paint out, all right? So then I'm just gonna use that to kind of highlight. I need more. To highlight my sections. And let me show you close up what that does. Can you see like right here where it kind of makes just little bits of a yellow dotty highlight look. I do have a brick and mortar. I'm in Hernando, Mississippi. So I'm gonna do that in a couple of places. Just add some of that ochre. So you're gonna go into your color and then offload some and just add little bits of it here and there. Now we're gonna also do this. I'm gonna try to get all that out of my brush without wetting it. And I'm also gonna try this with the green. All right, so this is the crocodile. I'm gonna go in. That's a lot of paint, so I'm just gonna kind of brush it through. And I'm gonna come and just add, whoops, not enough. A little bit of that green here and there. To your liking you can add start with less because you can always add more once it's on there it's kind of hard to take away so this is just kind of adding another layer to your painting okay now I'm gonna do a little bit of blue same thing offload a little and I'm just going to barely come in and I'm gonna add a little blue to my stem what do you think about that just brush in tiny bits of that blue here and there. And I totally have, give me one second, I'm gonna get myself a little baby wipe. And I had spilled some green on the edge of my canvas here. So I'm just gonna use my baby wipe and see if I can get that off. 
maybe not. I may have to just touch that up with my blue. Let's see if I can do that. Just add a little blue. <laughs> Let me rinse that. I should have used the baby wipe when it was still a little um, uh, wet. The green was a little wet, but that's okay. We're gonna add glass there, so hopefully it won't matter. So, let's see. I think I'm gonna do the same thing with white, but I wet my brush, so I'm gonna have to grab a new one. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my brush. I'm just gonna brush it through till it looks like I don't have any paint on my brush anymore. And I'm gonna hit the tops. Oh my goodness. Hit the top. Hit the top. Hit the top. And I'm gonna hit just a little on my stem as well. And now I'm tempted to do something. I'm gonna try it on one little area. And if it looks terrible, I'll stop. <laughs> I think also this white streak, I'm looking in the um, camera and that white streak is making me a little crazy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of orange on top of it to take it back just a little. All right, so I'm gonna take my yellow ochre I'm gonna put it a little bit over here by my white. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. And we're gonna lighten up that yellow ochre. Make us a new color. I am going to offload some of that because I have a lot on my brush. And I'm gonna test it. And I'm gonna try to make a little bit, hang on. I kind of want a little bit of a yellowy shadow around, and maybe not. Just a little bit, let me try that again. I've seen a couple of paintings where they, when they paint the pumpkins, they kind of do a little sh color a shadow of color around the pumpkin, and I'm not pulling that off very well, so we're gonna stop, All right? I love it though. Look, guys, we're not done yet, so don't get excited, but check this out. This is so colorful and fun. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's exactly right, Christy. Great minds, honey, great minds. Okay, so here's all my colors. I did use all of these, so I'm gonna set these over here because if you're a member of my membership, you get all the color lists and the tracer for inside the membership group. So we gotta save all that so we know what we did. Okay, so now I'm doing my favorite thing, super whimsical, and I'm gonna use my graphic 0.5 from Hobby Lobby Art Department. Thank you, D. long time no see. Um, actually, I think I've seen you more lately in the last few weeks than I have in a long time. Good to see you, sweetie. Um, I'm going to use this little pen to outline and really kind of help bring this pumpkin to life. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. I like short strokes. If you're new here, give me a thumbs up. If this is your first video or maybe your first or second video, can I get some thumbs up so I know who I'm talking to and know if I really need to explain in great detail what I'm doing. So give me those thumbs or hearts or something if you're brand new here. Okay, so this is a pen that is good. It goes good with resin, okay? This, it's a fine point. It's a 0 0.5 pen. Look at all my new people. Thanks for being here. You guys are awesome. So this is in Hobby Lobby. Master's Touch is the name of the pen, and it's in the art department, not the craft department. So go to where the pens and markers are, Master's Touch Graphic 0 0.5, and I'm gonna show you the magic that this pen creates. Now, we're gonna do, we're not gonna outline like we're outlining and drawing every square inch of this pumpkin. We do short, quick, loose strokes, okay? 
So you're going to start with your stem and I'm going to outline and I'm not even trying to stay in the lines guys and I'm going to show you in just a second. See how even the line goes outside my painted area? Okay, that is what I love. Now you do you, I'm going to do me, but this is how I like to do it. So now I'm going to come all the way down and I'm going to bring it into my little fingerlings that come down into my pumpkin. Now I need to make sure my pumpkin sections are separated nicely. So we're going to outline this one. Boom, boom. You can double outline. You can do dots. I like to go dot, dot, dot occasionally. Just loose strokes, okay? So there's one. So we're gonna start here, and I think this one's gonna be about right in here. And then we had one that was right along the edge of this fingerling thing. And then this one right there as well. And then I think there were just one separation here, I think right here. And then we'll go around. I'm gonna make a dot, dot, dot. Finish it off. My pen wants to die, so I'm gonna retrace a couple of these lines. And I'm gonna add a few in the middle. And we end up with this. So see how the pen kind of makes everything pop? It just kind of outlines and gives it a little extra something, something. So now on to the fun part. We are about to do something super fun. Hang on. And I am going to use Starfire Glass. And I have to tell you all, if you go, I'm gonna post this link real quick. If you go to my page today, oh, I guess my laptop is dead. I'm gonna post the link. Let's see, www.artshattered.com. We have Starfire Glass, which is the clear glass on sale for 20% off. So you're gonna, and it's just this glass. You're gonna enter code fall20. for 20% off this glass. Now I'm gonna tell you about this glass. This glass is perfectly clear, okay? It has no color to it at all, and it works really well with everything because it's going to allow me to add glass to this piece without the messing up my colors. You'll still be able to see all my colors right through this uh, glass. You can also tint this glass with spray paint, guys. So this is why I put this on sale. It is very versatile. You can use it on anything, and you can also tint it to the color that makes your heart happy. So we are gonna add this to our pumpkin, and I am literally going to just smatter it on. I'm gonna add some to the bottom. Oh, that's a monster piece. We're not gonna use that. So I'm gonna come around this one edge of the outer pumpkin, outside of that pumpkin, and I'm gonna bring it up a little here. I'm gonna try to kind of separate my sections, but I'm not gonna to work too hard at it because that just takes up too much time for me. Let's move that one off. And then Lord have mercy, I got uh, crazy fingers. Oh, I will do my curly cues. Thank you for reminding me. All along my bottom, put that one back too. We'll add a little to this edge and a little going up this side as well. I don't try to micromanage my glass too much. I like it to be kind of super organic. And um, so I don't try too hard 
to uh, place every little thing. Let's do that. I don't want, also don't like it to all be exactly the same. So we'll take that down a little. We'll take that down a little. We add this piece down there. And this piece here. And let me grab my pen back and do my little curly cues. Thank you, Sue. So curly cues are basically just those little crazy stems that come out of your pumpkin. There's no right or wrong way to do that. So I'm just gonna start out here and I'm just gonna draw my curly cues. Make sure they come all the way down to your stem. We'll come out this way and there. And I just use my little pen to do that. All right, so we are ready to rumble, guys. I'm only gonna mix one ounce of resin. I think that is totally going to be plenty. And if it's not, I'll just be in trouble. <laughs> I think we can do it. And I think we might add, after we resin, we might throw in a little bit of this crazy bit of beads that I have from left over from a project. That's a good idea, Christy. So I am gonna get my little cups, my little mix and measure cups. I got two of those here. I'm gonna mark them with my pen at the half ounce mark. So let me mark half ounce on my cup. This is probably gonna be way too much, but that's okay. If it is, I have this little pumpkin that I found in my stash when I was looking for some canvas. I apparently painted this last year and never put resin on it. So if we have too much, we'll add some glass and resin to that little cutie pie. So let's do our other cup at the half ounce. And now it's time to wear the gloves. I'm gonna pull that, I'm gonna actually push this up a little so I can mix my resin right here. I'm gonna grab my gloves. Oopsie. And put my gloves on. Oh, don't put two fingers in one hole. There we are. Ugh. Oh, look, one glove is the right size and one glove is massive. <laughs> okay, so I use Art Resin, which is made in the USA, and it's made specifically for art projects. Non, no VOCs, no BPAs, no COVs, COVs, and it doesn't stink like crazy like most of the other resins you're gonna find at your hobby stores, okay? This is uh, non-hazmat and made specifically for art. So I'm gonna pour half an ounce of the hardener. It's a two-part resin. So you're gonna do a 50-50 mix. So I'm gonna put half ounce of hardener in my one cup. Whoa, Cindy. Because they'll move all over the place. If I add these tiny, itsy-bitsy little beads here, when I'm doing my resin, they'll go everywhere. And they won't stay in place. Um, so we do that after, so they'll stick in. Okay, so that is my hardener. So next is my resin. Ow. The code is at checkout. And um, what I can do, if you want me to, you can send me an email if you'd like, but what I can do is cancel your order and you can go in and put that code in the checkout. It's at the um, credit card level. Okay, 50% hardener, 50% resin, but now I need a bigger cup to put it in because there's not enough space for me to pour one into the other and still be able to mix it. So I'm just gonna use this plastic cup and I am gonna put my half ounce of each into there so I have space to mix. Gotta have that air and you gotta have that space to stir and mix. So there is that. We're gonna do this one. 
Make sure you get it all out. Don't leave any, ooh, almost dropped it. Don't leave any in your cup. Get it all out. Spend a second or two making sure. Get it all yummy. And now I'm gonna use this tool. This is a silicone applicator. It's actually a makeup applicator that I, I got these from Amazon because I buy them in bulk. You can get these at the dollar store and this is gonna help me mix faster and better in this big old cup than this tiny little stick. So now I'm gonna mix this for three minutes. Jody, that literally comes with practice. I've been doing, I've been uh, working with resin for over 10 years and I know how, how much to mix because I've been doing it so long. Inside my membership, if you anyone chooses to join, it's a six by six. Uh, if anybody chooses to join every project we do, I give you the exact amount of resin that it takes for your project so you don't have to guess. And eventually, it just comes natural to you. You just know how much to mix. It just is something that is learned. So I'm gonna mix for three minutes, which is what it calls for. You're gonna do 50-50 and mix slowly and gently for three minutes. Yes, the silicone bowls are amazing, but I don't know why. I just, I actually have one left. I gave them all away because we have a monthly member appreciation and I believe that I've given all of mine to my members but one. So, let's see, and any, we, any resin we have left over, I'll let you know how much that is, and we'll do my other little cute pumpkin. They would look cute on the little blue pumpkin, won't they? We may do a little of both and see how it works. It'd really bring that little uh, blue pumpkin to life, wouldn't it? It's kind of kind of boring, which is probably why I never um, did anything with it. <laughs> I do need to buy more. Uh, Sandra, I got mine on Amazon. Just go to Amazon. You can buy a three pack of these for like five bucks and you can just clean them with a baby wipe and use them over and over and over. It's called a silicone makeup brush or you can actually look for silicone resin brush or applicator, maybe not a brush, and you should be able to find those, as well as the silicone mixing bowls. So the resin just cleans right out of those really well. I am the queen of Amazon. I'm pretty sure the man at Amazon is shocked when he doesn't have to come to my house because I don't go places. I just order online. Just order online. I'm the queen of that. So, let's see. Let me know when my three minutes is up. I'm bored already. <laughs> That's right, Julie. It was, wasn't it? I was like, what is this doing up here with all my blank canvases? Hey, Pammy. How are you? Did Donna show you her cross that she made? Donna bought a cross kit and made a cross. I was so surprised and so pleased. Worked great with Mod Podge too. Good call, Annie. Well, there you go. Dollar Tree. Try your dollar store first. And if you can't find them, Amazon is your friend. Yes. <laughs> she did, Pam. Isn't that crazy? Did you see it? Yes. Did she do good? She, she real, thank you, Sue. She really needs to send me a picture. I'm super excited to see it. Okay, so before I do this, I'm going to take my block. And I probably need both of these. I'm going to elevate my canvas on my block. 
And I'm probably going to have to get a different block. Let me see if I can. I think I can just use one of the bigger ones. It should stay well. There we go. And we're just going to start. Yay, that's awesome. Julie, if you come to the studio, yes, you can get Starfire with the discount here. We're open Thursday and Friday, uh, 12 to 4, and Saturday, 10 to 4. All right, so I'm going to start with just my glass. So I'm going to make sure I get my glass nice and covered. Get it all on your glass, and what happens is it goes through all those little glass nuggets, runs down through the middle of them all, covers all the sides and edges, and then it sticks the glass to the resin, holds it on nice and tight, and then what doesn't flow there flows out the edges, and then you're able to use that to complete the rest of your canvas. So let's get all this covered. I need to scoochie that up. I don't resin my sides. That is a personal choice. So that is up to you if you want to resin your sides or not. I don't like the drippage it creates, so I just don't do it. Look how the colors we're gonna start to pop as we resin as well. The resin really, really makes all those fun colors pop. Stand out really beautiful. You might need to use all of this for this pumpkin. Maybe, we're gonna try to squeak out the other pumpkin too. Last year's mo model. Okay, what you can do, Barbara, is re-resin over the entire thing. That comes from not mixing your resin well. So if you, let's just say, you know how when you make a dry cake mix and you put all the wet ingredients in and you start dumping it in your pan and suddenly there's a big blob of dry mix that didn't get mixed up? That's kind of the same concept. What happened is it while you were mixing, you missed mixing one little section of your resin, but what you can do is just mix up some more resin and go right over the top. And it should, as long as you mix it well this time, you should be, it should cover it and be fine. That's the beauty of it is if you have a sticky spot, you can just resin right over it and it will cure that. So, let me see. I got all the way to my edge and I still have resin left for my other pumpkin. But I do want to measure this to see how much I used. So let me dump it out in one of my little cups and see how much we have left. So I can tell you how much it might have just been a half an ounce. Look at that. See, I don't always get it right either, but I knew that I had other things to resin, so I wasn't worried about it. Yeah, it totally only took half an ounce to do this six by six pumpkin, because I still have half an ounce of resins, because I mixed a half ounce of hardener and a half ounce of resin. I still have half left. So I'm gonna push this one. I'm gonna move that up. I'm gonna push this one up this way. And I'm gonna bring this little cutie to the table. And I think we are gonna use these on here instead of glass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put resin on here. We may add a little bit of glass, but I'm just gonna dump some resin Spread it around. I'm gonna use my fingers. It'll go faster. Ooh, they're noisy outside. I still have 
<laughs> I still have resin, but I have something else that we can use it on. So stick with me, guys. I found several small art pieces that did not have resin. So we're going to work with it if you want to hang out. So I'm going to run my finger along the edge of this to make sure it's all covered to the edge. And before I add my beads, I'm going to hit this with... Ooh, I'm gonna hit this with my heat gun. This is one I did a long time ago. I have no idea. So to, it's not even gonna go in the membership. I have no idea what colors this is or even when I did it. I just found it in an old stash. I'll do your keychains too. So I'm gonna heat this up and pop the bubbles. Heat, 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 pop, pop, pop. And I'm gonna fix my paintbrush, y'all are awesome. Let me see, is this one? Yes. So I'm gonna fix my paintbrush too. I gotta to dry that off though. I'm gonna dip it in the resin and we'll stick it right back on. Ugh. Wipe off the excess. You guys are awesome. And we'll stick that there to dry. Okay, this has got resin on it, so what I'm gonna do is just take my beads. I'm gonna get these great big ones out. I might use them, but I don't know for sure if I want them in this piece. And I am gonna just sprinkle these beads and I can move them around wherever I want. Whoops, there went one. Oh shoot, I just touched my arm to my heat gun. I don't know, okay guys, I don't have any idea what colors or on the one I'm touching right now. Because I did this, I found this in a stash of, um, a stash of painted stuff that I did a long time ago, an old box of stuff. So I have no idea what these colors are or even when I did them. Seriously, no idea. So I'm gonna use my tweezers and I'm gonna push this around where I want it. And I'm actually gonna grab some more seed beads and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw this one in and I'm gonna throw this one in. I'm not gonna throw that one in. I'm gonna grab some more seed beads real quick and we're gonna add to that. I still have resin, so we're gonna do a couple more things because we do not want our resin to go to waste. So let me grab some, oh, these are super cool. I'm gonna grab some other seed beads and I'm gonna grab the keychains. This is uh, with white luster. I'm just gonna dump some in my little cup. We're just gonna keep going till the resin runs out. How about that? You might wanna look online for the, for the check seed beads. Uh, I bought a bunch online last year. I'm gonna go right around that edge. And I'm just kind of letting them go where they go. We'll add a little here. Yeah, I bought mine last year online. So check online if you can't find the, the C ones. They're super awesome. All right, I'm gonna put that aside. I'm actually gonna, whatever's left in here, I'm just gonna add to my pumpkin. There, no wastes. I'm gonna squish that over and voila. So this is an old pumpkin, guys. No way, don't know how I did it. Don't ask, don't ask. All right, so I have one more thing. Well, I'm gonna do these last because it's gonna take a, the tiniest amount of resin. So these are Lee's keychains. I've been telling her I was gonna resin them forever. But I have one more little piece. Look at this one. This is something I found in my stash as well. No earthly idea how I did it or what the colors are, but I can tell you it's got plaster on it. So we're just going to add some glass to it and finish it up. Again, I have no idea. It's kind of dirty too. Let me wipe it off. No idea how I did it or what the colors are. I can only say that it's got blue in it. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna use gray glass because the blue that's in it is a really dark blue. So I'm gonna add some of that gray, that's too big, right to the middle where the blue is. So it's kind of beachy right there now. And I've got a tiny bit of clear or starfire. I'm gonna add as well, just a tiny handful. And when I say a tiny handful, I mean a tiny handful. And I'm gonna add that underneath the gray. Just a smidge. I don't wanna to add too much glass because then I may not have enough resin. So I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I have enough resin to cover it. So now I have, I need to put some gloves back on. I don't wanna get that all over my fingers. So this is three art pieces for the price of one. Yes. All right. I was kind of excited to find these two little pieces because I thought, what the heck? These are already finished. All I got to do is resin them. So let's get our stick and our leftover resin. We'll make sure we have enough left for the keychains. And I'm just going to add the resin to this little piece. Whoops, got excited and it's going over the edge. Don't you do it, don't you do it. Let's cover your glass first, always. And then use the excess to spread around. All right, I'm pretty sure all my glass is covered. So, uh, and I have a little bit left for Lee's keychains. I'm just going to use this. Actually, that doesn't work because it's got texture. I'm going to use my fingers. It will go in my house. Yes. I didn't even think about that. So I'm going to spread that to the edge. There's a little more on the bottom than there should be, and it's dripping over the edge, and I'll show you how I clean that up. These gloves are too big, and it's driving me crazy. So we'll spread that around. Go all the way to the edge, bring it down. Now this one got some going down the side over here, but and I'm gonna clean that up, and I'm gonna push it over here for now. I'm gonna take my plate, I'm gonna turn it upside down, and I am going to, I'm gonna take this one glove off real quick because I don't wanna get resin on the fronts of these because they're already resined. But these are little keychains that Lee made, Lee Valentine with the turquoise Valentine. So we're gonna put a little bit of resin on there as well, and I'm just gonna use my finger think that'll keep me from, I'm actually, I'm going to take this glove off. Really need to be careful because I don't want to get excess resin on the top. Okay. So I'm going to take and put just one tiny drop of resin on each keychain. And that tiny drop is like smaller than a dime, really a small drop, a pencil eraser maybe. Whoops. And I'm gonna use my finger to just spread that to the edge without making too much of a mess. All right, so there's one. I think what I can do, okay, look what I can do. Watch this, I'm gonna use my stylus. Aren't they cute? I'm gonna touch the edge and then I can use it, hang on. <laughs> To hold it and go to the edge. Make sure it's all covered without getting sticky on the front as well. So we'll go to the edge. Y'all didn't know we we're gonna do a whole thing, did you? Go to the edge. And last one. 
go all the way to the edge and they are covered. Now, I really need to hit those with a heat gun, but I have to be very careful because I don't want to melt the styrofoam plate. So, heat gun on low. Now let's do a close up of everything. Okay, so uh, hang on, I got a little bit, I see a little spot showing up on one of the thingies. So I'm gonna scoop up a little, we'll put that there. That looks good now. So we were able with one ounce, guys, one ounce of resin, we were able to resin our cool blue pumpkin our mini, mini, old, who knows when I painted this pumpkin, a little tiny piece of sea art. I need to, I need to heat gun that too. And, and Lee, the back of Lee's, the back of Lee's keychains with one ounce of resin. Now, all right, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera up. I'm gonna show you these close up first. So here is the little sea art. Let me show you. This is like a, a alcohol wipe. So I can just take whatever drips and wipe that off with my alcohol wipe and no resin drip now. It's kind of coming out down over here. Let's wipe it off. Voila. All right, so here is our little sea art, little baby. We, we're not gonna resin over the beads in the, the um, pumpkin. They're gonna stick because they're laying in the resin. So there's our little blue pumpkin that I found in an old stash, so I have no idea what I used to paint that. So that is our little baby. Then I got resin on my fingers, hang on. And then there's this one, which is so cute. Look how colorful. And look how the resin just makes that pumpkin pop. It is so super cute.